Professor Dave and Chegg here. As we learn chemistry, we will encounter many different types of problems that must be solved. Some will involve simple calculations, some will involve following a particular algorithm, and others will require a significant amount of critical thinking, as a path to the solution may not be immediately available. But no matter what the problem, we want to be able to use our knowledge of chemistry and some creativity to be able to find the solution. Let's talk about a few ways to approach this so that we can all feel more confident in solving complex problems. For any given type of problem, the key to getting the solution is to identify the process that must be utilized to arrive at the solution. One problem-solving method employs memorization and could be referred to as the pigeonholing method. When we do this, we are trying to label and categorize the problem so that the process of arriving at the solution fits some predetermined approach that we have practiced many times. This approach will involve an algorithm or a set of steps that we can memorize and apply to any information input of the correct type. Sometimes this can be useful. If you learn a rigid way to do something, like long division, this should work every time, no matter what numbers you are given. But sometimes it does not work so well. For example, imagine that you memorize the way to drive from your house to the store, but not how to get back. You may be unable to return home. But if you understand fundamental principles like how to use cardinal directions, you may be able to rationalize that going from the store back home will require reversing all the directions you used to get there. And this may help you decipher the way home, not through memorization, but through an application of knowledge. You could then even figure out how to get to many other places and back, or from one place to another, if given a map such that you can apply your understanding of cardinal directions. This brings us to the second problem-solving method, which is more of a big-picture approach involving a broad understanding of the situation. Here we look within the problem itself for clues as to how to solve it. This will involve asking a series of questions and using our knowledge of fundamental principles to answer them. This approach is trickier, but in the long run, it allows us to solve any new type of problem we encounter, which will be important as we learn many new concepts. With these methods understood, let's also talk about organizing principles that will help us become better creative problem solvers. Number one, we need to read the problem carefully and decide on the final goal. This will allow us to look through the problem and identify keywords, and perhaps even draw a diagram representative of the problem. This is to conceptualize the problem as simply and visually as possible, thinking about where are we going. Number two, to get to the goal, solving the problem, we have to decide where to start. We may start by determining the reactants and products of a reaction, or some other way of categorizing data. The point is to see what we have as a starting point, so that we can answer, how do we get there? Number three, we follow the route to the answer, and then ask ourselves whether it makes sense. Is the magnitude appropriate? Are the units sensible for the parameter being investigated? This is called the reality check, and it is a good thing to get used to. This all may seem rather tedious, but once we get to some more difficult types of problems that deal with abstract concepts, it will be beneficial to have a rigorously conceptual way of approaching problems, as many of them may seem quite daunting at first glance. And being able to navigate these problems confidently will increase your chances of success as you move through your education. Professor Dave for Chegg. See you next time.